Right, welcome everybody. We'll make a start, if that's okay. Um, thank you for joining uh, at the end of a, a long day, and we're very close to the bar, so I appreciate this is a challenge, but hopefully we can stay together for an hour, or just under an hour. Uh, my name is Dan Crossley. Uh, I'm Exec Director of uh, an organisation called the Food Ethics Council. Um, we're a not-for-profit, uh, and our mission is uh, we, want, well, we want to accelerate the shift to a uh, food system that's fair for people, planet, and animals. And I'm not a farmer, I uh, don't pretend to be, so deliberately have brought uh, two people from the world of farming um, to speak in a moment. I'll introduce them in a sec. Um, the purpose of today, of this session, is deliberately um, upbeat. Um, the title is, I can remember it, Grounds for Optimism. Um, and in the words of Cormac Russell, um, how can we build on what's strong, not what's wrong? Um, and so this is not pretending for one minute uh, that there aren't huge issues out there. Um, there are global, local, national, um, massive issues, massive challenges. We recognise those. We're sort of parking them for a minute uh, for today. We want to deliberately focus on the positive. Um, so I hope you come with your optimistic hats on. Um, we want to celebrate, basically, and understand what's exciting uh, about farming at the moment, what's the good stuff going on, um, and how can we do more of it. So it's simple as that. Um, so this is no, there's not going to be formal lectures. I'm, not, I'm going to shut up in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, we're just going to hear from some speakers, six, seven minutes each, um, and then there'll be this, some of you will like this, some of you will hate this. Um, we're going to get you in, into groups, chatting to your neighbours, so you'll, you can't just sit quietly on your own, I'm afraid. Um, just for 15, 20 minutes, sharing some of the stuff that you're finding exciting at the moment, and then we'll uh, come back into kind of bigger group, and those that want to, you can just share some of the things they talked about. So, very informal, um, but hopefully kind of upbeat, positive way to finish the first day. The ground swell, my first ground swell, and loving it so far. Um, so what I'll do, I'm going to ask um, our two speakers to just kind of, rather than me read out a long biography, I'm going to ask um, Nikki and then Ian just to kind of give 30 seconds, that's not too much of a challenge, just to kind of say who you are, where you come from, um, you know, what your farming philosophy is if you want, um, just, just to kind of so people know where you're coming from, and then uh, and then I'll just frame things, and then we'll hear from both of you. So, Nikki, hello. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, I'm Nikki Oxall, and I'm an educator and would call myself an agroecological farmer, and I'm based in northeast Scotland in Aberdeenshire. Obviously, for my accent, that's not where I'm from originally. Um, I was born and brought up in Shropshire, but moved to Scotland three and a half years ago. Um, we have a small farm and a small herd of rare and native breed cattle, and we sell uh, beef direct, and are moving to a new farm in two weeks, so that's the ideal time to come down south and escape the packing, um, and are hoping to set up a micro dairy um, and broiler, um, broiler chicken uh, set up in the next year. Brilliant. Thank you, Nikki, and thank you yeah, for coming down. Ian? Yeah, uh, Ian O'Reilly, I... I um farm with my partner Emma Robinson, 250 acres of uh, upland, fairly challenging uh, Pennine Lancashire uh, land. Uh, we're organic, we're mixed livestock, predominantly dairy, uh, and we retail everything online and through a farm shop. Brilliant, thank you. And um, on the programme we have down Ian and Emma, um, it was always the case that only one of them would be able to come. Um, so sadly Emma's not here, but Ian is here, which is brilliant, so thank you for coming. So. Um, the, I guess all I'd say is so the, the framing question, the, the kind of key question we want to ask is what's, yeah, what's the good stuff uh, in green farming or in farming at the moment? Um, and deliberately, I'm not going to. We could spend ages defining uh, uh, what good stuff means. Um, as I said, food ethics cancer. We're interested in, you know, food and farming that is fair for people, animals, and planet. And I would suspect everyone in this room probably, hopefully, buys into that. Um, so, so anything is for me that is, is good stuff is that moves us towards, in some way, moves us towards um, farming uh, and a food system that is better for people, animals and planet. So that's the kind of broad framing. Um, the only other, I guess, final two quick things I'll say before I hand over to um, Nikki then Ian is, one is um, there's uh, just, you've probably heard this from others already, but just because we're involved in uh, one of the organisations supporting it, there's the CLEAR um, has launched today all about mandatory uh, method of production labelling and we're one of the 30 or so organisations supporting that, the idea that we need better, clear, honest labelling on our food, so just mentioning that as a brief plug. Um, but also we at the Deputy Council um, are doing a project in the dairy space, uh, so I'm not a farmer but um, we're, we're bringing together some people from the, some dairy farmers together to help understand 
what's uh, how how what's need, what they need to help transition to more ethical, uh, fair dairy. So just to kind of say we've got particular interest in dairy, but really interested today, obviously in, in the dairy space, but more broadly, what's uh, what's exciting you about the world of farming? So with that, I'm going to hand over to Nikki to give us about seven minutes or so of what's exciting you at the moment in the world of farming. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, I guess for me, the things that are most exciting um, kind of can be summed up in terms of community um, and diversity. And what I didn't talk about in my introduction is that I also work for the Pasture Fed Livestock Association. I am involved in the Nature Friendly Farming Network in Scotland and also the Land Workers Alliance, all of the acronyms. Um, and I think that that opportunity for organisations to kind of really support people to engage with different ways of farming and accessing food or accessing land or um, supporting that kind of more agroecological or regenerative approach is, is something that's amazing and just from like being here and seeing all these people and all these organizations that are on the same page that for me is just it's phenomenal it's really really exciting and I think that idea of community whether it's more formalized structures or more informal communities like the many WhatsApp groups that we're probably all members of. And there's loads of people here in the Mob Grazing UK group, um, people in the Micro Dairy group that I'm in. All of that allows us to basically learn from everybody else's mistakes, which is amazing. Because if you create these communities where people can say, you know what, I tried this, I copped up, it went really badly, there's somebody to then support you and say, well, it's okay, you know, try this next time, or what about that? So this idea of Kind of community and collaboration and support is just incredible at the moment and you know really kind of blows me away whether it's um there's a grazing group that i'm involved in and we meet monthly and just have a chat about what's going well or what isn't going well and just questioning each other being safe to do that is, is great and that kind of ties into this idea of diversity that you have this diversity of thought this diversity of opinion that kind of can come together and um and really change the way that we're thinking so i'm, I'm a first generation farmer um, I have previously worked at an agricultural college, I was head of department, and I was very lucky to work with some very innovative and forward-thinking um, farm manager and farm staff, and, you know, I was really lucky with that, but, and I, so I've been exposed to this fantastic community of people who want to do things a bit differently, and who want to reduce inputs, and who want to think about the whole food system, not just this commodity product that's being produced. So that idea of community, for me, as a, as a first-generation farmer, has been amazing, and, and I can't imagine being able to take some of the risks that we have without that level of support. So that's one thing. And building on diversity, um, for any of you in here that follow me on, on social media, where you'll find me at How Mill, um, cows and trees is one of my most favorite things in the world. Um, we basically built our whole system around agroforestry. We are grazing our cattle through well-established woodland. So this isn't something that we've sort of just planted and we're waiting to happen. These are really, you know, kind of, 60, 70 year old birch woodlands and 20 year old native broadleaf woods and that ability of cattle to get everything that they need from trees, uh, the ability to browse, there is nothing more wonderful than watching a cow standing underneath a tree, stretching its neck up and eating the leaves and knowing that it's doing that by choice because you've just moved it on a mob grazing move into that paddock, it's surrounded by lush grass, but that cow knows that it needs to go and eat those leaves. And, you know, I just I just find that incredible, like that whole, um, just taking the time to observe and step back and look at what cattle are doing um, and, and just recognizing that they're not just livestock production units, that these are sentient beings that can make choices. Um, and when you give them the space to make those choices, it's really interesting to see what the outcomes are. So um, I recently watched one of my cows who um, has a calf running at foot basically teach her calf how to eat dock leaves. And um, I'm quite happy to kind of sell those genetics to people if you're interested. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's just incredible. I literally just, watch, you know, just, sat and just sat in the paddock for a while and just watched that happen. And then been watching a two-month-old calf learning how to eat oak leaves. And just, you know, having that that ability to teach and learn as an educator at heart, obviously that really resonates with me. So yeah, community, support, collaboration, and agroforestry, I think are the things that really excite me at the moment about, about this movement. Brilliant, thank you, Nikki. Um, loads, loads we could ask about, but I want to hold fire. Um, we'll go straight on to Ian, if that's right, Ian. Yeah. What's, what's exciting you, Ian? Well, 
I think if I share our journey, because uh, it's been a 15-year uphill sort of struggle. Um, as anyone in farming will know, life is generally a struggle most days and, and brings a different challenge every day. Um, 15 years ago, with the organic milk price crashing, uh, 80 dairy short horns, uh, 200 pigs, a uh, couple hundred sheep, um, we were put into a very difficult position. Uh, Emma's family have farmed Gaysville for about 500 years. It's gone down the female line twice. So we were handed a very hot potato as a baton. Uh, carry this on and pass it on to the next generation and look after your nature and, and whatever you do, don't mess those meadows up. We've got some beautiful biological heritage site meadows, uh, over 80 species of plant in them, uh, probably some of the rarest in Pennine Lancashire, they, they just don't exist anymore. Um, and, and rather than a, it's a lovely thing to have, but it's a burden as well because we have got to take that and we've got to pass it on. So we were faced with that dilemma 15 years ago. Milk prices drop in, what are we doing? We've got an auction mark down the road that, that we, we cannot get uh, an organic premium for on pork or lamb. Um, diversify or intensify or sell up. Uh, well, the third was never an option because most of the ancestors were turning their grave. Most of them still haunt the farmhouse and would haunt us. Um, the other two really were uh, diversification or intensification. Well, back to those meadows, that was never going to happen. They were never going to become silage meadows. They were never going to become you know, intensively crop grassland. Um, so we had to think of something else. We were producing around probably 220, 230,000 litres of milk a year. Um, where to put that, what to do with that. Uh, and of course, all these organic pigs and the lambs, what to do with those. So box schemes, farmers markets, which eventually grew into a farm shop. Um, and beyond that, became an online, online retail uh, enterprise. The great thing about it is we've had this fantastic journey, and, and I think uh, Nicky touched on it, that you know, having groups of people to sort of uh, talk to and, 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 and learn from you know, is great. It, 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 every hole you could have fallen in, we fell into. So you know, if anyone wants any good advice of which holes to avoid, we are, we are your people. Um, but it, 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 it was more than just that support network. It was really sort of learning again you know, how can we farm less cows? We, we cut the herd to sort of 60, from 80, 80 odd short ones going through the parlour to 60. And we make so much more money from them now because we sell it direct, because we sell it as unpasteurised. Um, but the whole journey for us was about handing this pattern on, but doing it in a sustainable fashion, doing it so that we could pass something on to, to our children and do something that was right for the farm and the landscape that you know, we're custodians of at the minute. Um, I think rather than, than, than bore you with any more of the story, it, 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 the positive things that have come out of what we've managed to achieve, um, we've saved a family farm, we've built up partnerships with about 30 other small family farms where we don't tell them what we're going to pay for a body of beef, we ask them what they need for it. You know, it's a fair trade environment. You know, what do you need to make a profit with that beast? If you, that doesn't happen in farming, you, you should take pot luck on on auction day or whatever, on market day. Uh, so that, that's been a real positive because it's a fair price. A small family farm, you know, we, we were in that struggle, not knowing whether we were going to end up selling up uh, or uh, giving up or doing something uh, something daft. Uh, so really, you know, it's a nice way forward. It's a very sleep well way forward. So uh, yeah, that, that, that's about it from, from us. Brilliant. Um, to Fantastic stories and two, yeah, I guess at different different stages of the journey, if you like, if there is such a thing as a journey, lots of different journeys out there. Um, and as Nicky said, you're, he's moving moving farms in two weeks, is it? Um, and Ian has had has sort of faced this, Ian and Emma faced this uh, massive choice, I guess, you know, a number of years ago and gone down a particular path, which, which is, is, continues to, to pay off. Um, you'll all have your own stories, your own questions. Um, what what do rather than this be a kind of Conventional Q and A, where you all kind of put your hand up and ask questions of Ian and uh, Nikki, which which could be could would would be I'm sure useful and fruitful. Um, instead, what I want to do is um, get you talking to the people around you, whether you know them or not. Um, I say I know some of you all kind of shrug your shoulders at this point and think, oh, I don't want to talk to other people. Um, but it, no, in all seriousness, uh, what this so it's not the end of the session. Now, everyone walk off. I'd really love you to just stay 15 minutes or say 15, 20 minutes, just kind of. 
turn your chairs around if you, if you if you need to to form a little mini circle in a group of three or four or five, whatever's whatever bits. Um, just introduce yourself really briefly. Um, don't give all your full life histories, uh, otherwise it'll take too long. Um, the idea is just to answer that question: What's exciting you about farming at the moment? What's what's the good stuff? Um, and if you run out of things to say, think about how we can do more of the good stuff. So that's it. Just what's exciting you? Um, it might be a particular, you know, something you tried out on your farm last week. It might be, um, you know, a massive, might be a particular government policy. Maybe, maybe not. It might be the Australian, no, no. Uh, who knows? It could be anything. But um, whatever it is, just, just share it. 15, 20 minutes in your kind of small groups. And then we won't get you to formally report back or anything, but we'll just spend the last 15 minutes or so. We'll get Nikki and Ian back on stage then. Um, and we'll just hear from those who want to share something they've heard that's, uh, that's exciting. And we'll have a final reflection from Ian and Nikki. So, Ian and Nikki will come and do you want to go and join? Yeah. Join a group. Um, so, form into, you can do, do this yourselves, uh, move around a little bit. Obviously, keep a bit of distance from each other. Um, just form into small groups, 15, 20 minutes, say hi, and then what's, what's, what's the good stuff you'll see? Right, everybody, sorry to break up the party. Um, could, could ask Nikki and Ian to come back up on stage. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, appreciate today. Many of you will have learned lots of technical things, and lots of I've certainly learned about soil science and nutritional quality and lung beetles and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but you've kind of the, probably the hardest uh, thing of all the session you've just done is that game of social conversation, um, which feels really hard after the last 18 months. Just to me, anyway. Um, no, thank you for joining in. I was wandering around hearing some of the stuff people were saying, which is brilliant to hear. Um, and almost all upbeat, exciting, the odd bit of, um, of kind of less uh, optimistic, but generally really, really upbeat, which is brilliant. Um, like I say, we haven't got time to kind of hear from everybody on everything that was most exciting, but um, we haven't got a raving mic, so you'll have to shout. But I'd just be interested in anyone in any group really want to share something, either the, the thing that you found exciting yourself or something you heard from somebody else um, that was exciting. And I should say, my colleague Claire is going to be scribbling things down. We're not attributing anything or anything like that. But we, might, I might do, we might do a kind of short blog or something reflecting on this afterwards, but we're not, we're not going to be attributing anything you say. So, um, but yeah, who, does anyone want to share something that um, Nikki and Ian can't answer yet? I'll let them come in later. Um, anyone want to share something first of all that's who wants to go first? First is always the brave one, otherwise I'll pick someone I know. Yeah, gentleman here. Well, I'll just say what I, I repeat when I said that the most exciting for me is actually this, and, and the fact that so many people use that just to buy things there. Uh, it's willing this change, which is effective. For me, that's the most exciting Brilliant, thank you. And in case, that, so the, the point in case you couldn't hear was uh, today, this, yeah, just the vibe about today, and this, this whole, and in, in a way, and the session we just had is, is I guess, echoes Nikki, Nikki's point about community and supporting each other, hopefully not intentionally, but that's, you know, it's that um, people coming together and learning from each other. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, who wants to go next? Uh, lady of Ben, please do project your voice if you can. Uh, so I heard someone say that, uh, my group said that dumb beetles are awesome, we all need to learn about dumb beetles. And I missed that presentation, so I'm going to go and do that after this. Brilliant. Who wants? <laughs> Just some, um, as, as a, as a non-dung beetle expert, what's the, what is there one sentence about why dung beetles are, are, are amazing? Anyone want to give me that? I don't know why I look at you. Look, look, people look at you. Is it, you know, they're cool. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. Without the moon. Yes. <laughs> Good line. Without the <laughs> Thank you. Uh, gentlemen here. I think it's, you know, it's just very close to being here four times. I've been here four times and I missed one. But there was a chap in our group who was saying that, um, you know, he feels a bit isolated back on the farm. And I think some of the problems can be that if you come to a event like this and you've got one of your ideas, they just become a bit reticent when you get back on your own farm and you think, now, if I'm the third of my and yeah, so then somehow that you need a mentor, you need a big farm in your area to be put in touch with to see how things can be done. So that you come out of yourself and you make a check. Thank you. Did you all hear that? 
Does anyone, do you, anyone want to add anything? Um, Nicky, or anyone want to add anything on that? If I can, uh, that is exactly the problem we faced, that there wasn't anyone there. Uh, and I've met many people on the journey now that I've said, pick up the phone, come and see us, you know, whatever, because talking costs nothing. And, and it's great to share good and bad experience. Um, yeah. Thank you. Nicky, anything to add to that? No, I mean, I just, uh, no. That's fine. That's good. Sure, it's good. Yeah, lady, lady here. Is there an open uh, open rate in parts of this? A bloody part of the open rate? Yeah, we have a lot of people who are open. Is that a question? Are there, should we say? Yeah, I'm there. So the question is, are there open regenerative farms so that people can learn from? I don't know. So yeah, well, the, um, the, the AHDB have strategic farms and monitor farms that do give the opportunity for kind of wider learning. Dan is one of those, so maybe you could ask Dan about how you might want to know a bit more about that behind. Dan, give everyone away. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> but he did a talk about it earlier, so it's okay. Um, and then obviously like Open Farm Sunday, there will be more regenerative um, or agroecological farms that open for Open Farm Sunday. Um, and also, I think, yeah, just kind of scouting about on social media, quite a lot of farms are just kind of, just reach out to people and say, can I come and, and visit? And, I, you know, I, people have got in touch with me and we've hosted people just to come for a visit at our place. Um, and loads of really amazing farmers have put up with me, following them around for a morning, asking questions. And, yeah, I think people are really open to kind of share what they're doing and also learn from the people who are visiting. So if in doubt, just find a farmer and harass them and nag them until they let you visit. Is there a platform where farmers could visit all the easy and like farmer dating. Farmer dating, farmer dating. I think it's called Muddy Matches, isn't it? No? <laughs> yeah, I mean, in a way, so if you are feeling like you're a farmer in Cornwall yeah. and you have this feeling, I don't know who I really should do this or not, let's look around if there is other regenerative farmer close to me or similar soil or similar crop or similar dairy farm. I can ask or I can give a call and say, hey, yeah, yeah, I guess it, like there are networks that are supporting that. So like the Pasture Fed Livestock Association has regional groups. That's kind of if you're into pasture fed ruminants, then you can join as a member and then your regional group will be facilitated and we've got Southwest no Cotswold facilitator, um, Scotland facilitator. So yeah, you know, there are facilitators who are supporting that. Um, there are organisations like, well, Jyoti just walked in, so the Land Workers Alliance yes. that will uh, that will kind of connect people. Perfect timing. We'll connect people locally. The Nature Friendly Farming Network is a great way of meeting other people. So there's all these different organisations who are kind of doing that. But no, I guess there's not one single platform. Um, the regenerative Women on the Land that does the same. Oh yeah, got, yeah. But Base UK is great if you're an arable farmer. But I would say that there's lots of mm, yeah. I'd say that there's lots of livestock folk who maybe are less present in base, but it's another good example of one, for sure. Brilliant. Uh, for those that just walked in, um, we, we're just sharing the last bit of the session, we're just sharing what people find exciting. We've just been chatting in groups, what people find exciting at the moment. We've got time for a few more, otherwise I might, I'm going to pick on Jyoti in a minute. Uh, so I just walked in. Uh, not yet, because you've got an ice cream. Um, yes. Hi, um, I've been to like everyone else, lots and lots of different talks today, and as well as community, I think one of the massive things that's coming up is nutrition. Um, the last year has scared people about the food security for the first time since the Second World War, and in our shop we have lots of conversations now about food, where it comes from, what you should eat, yeah, pasture fed, for example, or try and go down a less processed, less conventional, slightly different route. But nutrition has come up time and time again over all the talks I've been to today. And I think actually we are on the cusp of something really exciting and linking food to farming more thoroughly for the first time in, I think, probably 40 50 years. So, from my point of view, that, that's a really, really exciting. Telling the story of food, it's like everyone else could be on. Brilliant. And does it, do other people think that so farming for nutrition, um, which is a phrase that's been used by a few people in recent years, but does feel like there is some some momentum, which is exciting. Um, anyone else want to come and share last couple of minutes sharing something exciting? I don't. I heard a few people talk about direct selling. I mean, you, you may. Um, does anyone want to share anything about um, positive experience on direct selling? Yeah. <coughs> 
So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to say that essentially you've got the space to do it. We're definitely do it. Uh, we did it uh, when we are in the centre of the park. We opened up the new one to shop. So, you literally cross the street by the town to get it together. And honestly, I think it's bigger than it's dark down to under the So, I think you can just. I mean, can I, can I just jump in there as well? Online, online was, was the pivotal point for us. Do it, do, yeah, well, I, I wish we'd done it five years sooner. Yeah, do it. If you've got space, you can do it. I mean, literally, it was part, part of our bar. We just burned into a little shack. I keep three things out of a pen and he can pick two bags. Do it, do it, do it. Just out of interest, who here is doing, like, the Dungeons and Dragons thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a very small scale, all, all figures are doing direct selling or trying it out. Okay, interesting. Yeah, okay. Uh, fair few. Uh, really interesting. Um, any other final things, positive things to share? People starting to wonder in from the bar. She's, they're, they're, they're tempting us with pints now. Did so. you not bring us a pint? Me. That's very disappointing. <laughs> um, yeah, any other final, what's something come? Oh, which group haven't we haven't heard from? Maybe the group at the back? Anyone there want to? Share something that's ex exciting you at the moment. I'll say um, these two are getting into getting into farming, selling eggs, and getting the youth involved and um, excitement slash interest from our local schools. That's really exciting. I definitely education is definitely a key thing. So uh, yeah. Brilliant. And what would help that flourish? What would um, help? I think, like always, communication between farmers and local area groups, as we've been saying. Um, yeah, getting, yeah, getting, just going to the primary schools and talking to the headmasters or headmistresses, that's a good way to do it. Just having an open door or an open gate. Is it worth mentioning farmer time? Yeah. So, yeah, Matt was sharing that he's just uh, started doing farmer time. So for those of you that don't know, it's where farmers get linked with a primary school and it's weekly, weekly, um, like, yeah, chat about what you're doing on the farm. And so Matt's in the borders, but the school is in Leeds, so they're not necessarily that close, but it's just about sharing what's going on on farm in primary schools. I think we, we've done the educational access visits now for, for many, many years. Um, we've even got to sort of, uh, we did pre-COVID up to sort of 180, 200 visits a year. So you know, some days there were three, three or four groups coming in and out of the farm. Um, but during COVID, it was the country trust that took the initiative and created Farm in a Box, uh, where the box was sent to the school. It had wool in it, it had hay in it, straw, bits and pieces, uh, an empty milk bottle. Um, and then on the day the school was, was opening that box, we'd get on Zoom and run around the farm like Annika Rice and Co. Uh, and get the kids. The next best thing you know, to be in there with the animals was to get in amongst the you know, piglets and, 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 and goats and all sorts of things. Uh, it's great. Education is so important, especially with food and food production. Now I've got a horrible image of Ian dressed up as Annika Rice in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Uh, any, any, I can't remember which group, but we heard anything from this, there was a small group down here, and, and Jotty, I know you're not in the group, feel free to chip in as well. Um, anyone from this group here? Um, well, I, I was whining about the fact that we produced beef. Hang on, hang on, you're, no, no whining allowed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, actually, hearing about how, how it slaughtered the animals we produced beef and lamb, but sort of has a long way away and not really open to us to, to access and really get close to back to the the market. I think, I think it highlights a common problem, um, the, the lack of abattoir space and uh, it, it's, it's a real hurdle to cross to get into direct selling. You need the abattoir near or you need a process that you can get animals to an abattoir and back to you uh, either in a short space of time. It, it, it is, you know, I haven't got the answer to that really. Wish I had. So the organisation like Sustainable Food Trust are doing kind of campaign around yeah more local and mobile abattoirs, um, which yeah is arguably much much needed. Um, any any other group last chance to for people to share something that excites them apart from the bar. <laughs> and I say this, I've actually got to run off and I can't go to the bar. Um, yeah, go for it. Uh, what guiding principle would each of the speakers give to the people here today? 
Thank you. Future journey. Oof, okay, we'll, we'll hold that. I'll save that for a minute. Good, good question. Well, the question is what guiding principles would the speakers give to uh, those in the room uh, on their journey? Interesting. Come back to that. Um, you can say that in your final wrap up in a minute. You'll get to do. Um, anyone else? Last chance. One more. Let's say one more. One more exciting thing. Well, Go on, Chelsea. Yeah, there's a lot of good projects in the market. Yeah. I'm trying to think about the direct sales and what they're producing and selling locally, um, addressing the affordability issue and really thinking about making more big quality and health for you, whether it's you know, the, the parts of your animal that's been pasture fed animal, you know, the neck or the you know, the shanks or the things that are the cuts that then sell at the premium yeah. prices, making sure that they're accessible to people who are in poverty, people on low incomes, you know, people all across the spectrum economically. And I think that's really important, yeah, and getting linkages with communities, maybe in areas where there's not a lot of fresh food and veg or, you know, healthy grains, and stuff with that accessible, affordable food, and kind of making that part of your supply chain. So maybe if you're aiming for the high-end stuff to get the, the, you know, the profit, also combining it with delivering and selling to people on lower incomes, because it's a really important part of our, you know, social responsibility. So it's a bit seeing a lot more of that. Absolutely. Yeah, well put, Jyoti. And on a, a separate but related point, um, I know LWA's got a Hamburg Science campaign. Is it Vocal for, Lo uh, Vocal for Local uh, recently, which is to, to check out, um, which is brilliant. Thank you. Um, so thank you all for joining in and humouring me and us with this. So it's, it's deliberately supposed to be a kind of informal session. I hope you found it useful just to have a chance to talk to people, um, share some positive uh, things that you're seeing at the moment in this world that's there is lots of doom and gloom and lots of indicators going in the wrong direction it's very easy to get drawn into this um, negativity and again not not pretending that doesn't exist but uh, it's really important as I said I, I like the, the mentality of this build on what's strong not what's wrong and how can we do more of more of the good stuff and, and change the environment around us the business environment policy environment so that the good stuff can flourish um, and again I appreciate that sounds a bit over simplistic um, there's lots of challenges in that but I just like that as a way of thinking. Um, I'm going to ask Nikki and Ian just to share based on what you've heard and you've responded already but any any kind of final thoughts including if you like answer the, the uh, gentleman's question about uh, yeah guiding principles uh, or or kind of final final pearls of wisdom. Um, Nikki if you want to go first. Uh, I think what was so something to take forward that I was really excited about hearing was uh, mentions of like people who are first generation farmers or who are getting access to land um, and able to kind of start their farming operation either alongside other things that they're doing or um, uh, yeah kind of setting off on their own. So that's really great to hear about and yeah it's super exciting. In terms of guiding principles, we use holistic management and our holistic context is all about diversity and abundance. And so every decision we make, every uh, whether it's about moving our cattle that day or you know, whether we're going to change the times of moving them or whether it's about who we're selling to or how we're selling, we're always coming back to how are we enabling increased diversity and how are we enabling abundance. Um, so yeah, that was quite an easy one for me because we think about it all the time. But yeah, thanks for asking, great question. Brilliant. But just before Ian asks, um, have you got, what's your answer to your own question if you've got one? <laughs> so anyway, I'll, let you, I'll let you think about it while Ian's talking and I'll come back to you about Ian. Um, I think the, the one message that I've got for everyone is, is believe in yourself because be passionate about your produce because you, you put so much effort and so much work into it um, and, and people like people with passion, they, they buy from people with passion. Um, I think to, to answer the question, uh, I, I'm the eternal optimist. The glass is always half full. I, I, can, I can be, I can see the best in every situation, and at, at probably our darkest hour, someone turned around to me and said, um, "Good judgment is based on a string of poor experiences," and they were absolutely right. And, and it, you know, things get better. Things move on, but believe in yourself and, and, and don't keep putting it off. Do it. Get on with it. I wish we had launched online years before we did, but it's not a regret. I'm glad we're doing it now. Thank you, Ian. Um, right, you've got a, probably a glass, a glass one third full. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say my guiding principle is let go of the pursuit of yield, acknowledge there's more to farming than just 
that, that, that financial kind of angle. Value is more than finance, is what I would say. Yeah, I love that. Let go of the pursuit of narrow definition of yield. Um, yeah. Can I have another microphone? Can you come up and do a speech or something? Yeah, we've got, we're going to stay on for another half an hour. And we're going to... <laughs> Um, no, massive thank you. Um, first of all, um, a big thank you. Join me round of applause for Nikki and Ian. And, and do, do follow them on social media and all that kind of stuff. Um, as I said, we're Food Ethics Council are kind of been around 20 odd years and we, we haven't dived deep into lots of farming issues uh, for a while, but we're kind of re entering the, the, the farming space and particularly projects in, in the dairy world. So we'd love to. Love you to kind of get involved. Um, so do follow up um, and do do follow us uh, as well. Um, but yeah, final thing to say: enjoy the sunshine the rest of the day. So I'd love to join you for a beer, but I have to run after this. But um, I hope you have a brilliant rest of uh, rest of event. Con- I was going to call it a conference, event, whatever you want to call it, uh, show. Um, and uh, yeah, take care and keep all those exciting things that you've you've talked about today. Hold on to them. Try and do more of them and do. Do keep talking, sharing, uh, and support each other. But thank you, and have fun.